Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation. Come all you here, now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad
Well, thank you so much to Jimmy and the rest of the worship team for another amazing week of worship. We're so glad that you guys are spending another Thursday with us. And uh, just kick things off, we have an amazing small group video from the Josue and Ledge. So check it out. What is up, everybody? It is your residential CSN, UNLV University small group leader, Lydia, aka Ledge. So I'm going to take this time to kind of explain to you what my study is all about. I co-lead with Josue. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head. <laughs> look at his lips. <laughs> I don't know. What to say? I mean, I was kind of just told to film this and nod my head. Whatever Lydia's saying, listen to her. She's telling the truth. That is all. So here's where we come in. Acts City is all about watching the disciples listen to Jesus and evangelize. We're also seeing the start of the Christian church. This is huge news, guys. People are becoming Christians. It's getting around. We're also looking at Paul, one of the most famous apostles ever, and we're seeing him go between the Jews and the Gentiles and trying to make amends. So you're probably thinking right now, well, that sounds nice and all, but aren't studies ending finals week? Well, you're partly right, but you're also partly wrong. So Josue and I decided that we are going to keep doing Acts study until we're finished with the book of Acts, and we're not yet finished. So once your studies end, we highly recommend that you come join us. It is not too late. We would love to have you. We're asking some really good questions like what is the church supposed to look like in modern day? How do we deal with persecution? And what does it mean to actually have the Holy Spirit in your life? So if those sound interesting to you, which it should, then come join Josue and myself as we finish off the book of Acts. It's not too late. So now that I have that out of the way, I hope you guys are not catching corona. You guys are social distancing and staying six feet apart as you should be. But legit guys, I know finals is coming up. I'm sure you're stressed, but please don't be. The Lord has got you in his hands. You guys are going to finish strong. You're going to eat this yeast. And I think next semester, it's all going to be Gucci. So stay safe and stay healthy until I can see all your beautiful faces. And God bless guys.
Welcome to my camera shelf. Uh, so for this segment of the show, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour. Uh, starting off with the first film camera I ever owned. This is for my great uncle. This is the Leica, his f most prized camera. I'm so, I'm so grateful that he gave this to me. This is also from him, another Leica. We are loyal Germans, so we like to stick with our German brands. Um, these are two lenses that came with that Leica, so that's super cool. This Leica came with two lenses as well. This one down here, and then this one back here. This is the third film camera I ever owned. This is the Fujika. I got this from an old uh, gentleman that I took photos for. And then this has two lenses as well. This one up here, and then this bad boy back here. This is a 400 millimeter lens. Perfect for taking wildlife photography. So down here, I have a old metal film cartridge from Germany. This is just super cool. Uh, just a little knickknack that I like to have. Uh, this is an old style tripod. It's super Super compact so it's the one I use the most this here is an accessory for the tripod or a film camera you put a light bulb right here and when you press the shutter button on the camera the light bulb goes off and there's an old-fashioned flash for you this right here is a more modern flash that I like to use on my DSLR if necessary and then right here this is the last film camera I have this is a Yashica D it's a double lens camera which is so cool and if you flip this up then you look down here and then this is the lens that you see so so now that you've seen all my film cameras, I'm going to go down to the camera that I use the most on a daily or weekly basis, depending on what I'm doing. This is a Canon EOS Rebel uh, from 2003. It's a DS6041. Super old. You probably cannot find this anywhere now. I was gifted this by a friend who is super generous to give this to me. I just have on an 85mm 1.8, I believe. Um, so with my favorite lens, I do have the kit lens, the 15 or the 18 to 55 millimeter, but it's not the best quality, so I tend to stick with the 85 millimeter. Um, but I actually do have another camera coming. I just ordered a Canon 5D Mark III. Jimmy, insert photo here. Um, so I'm super excited to get that. It's gonna come in on Friday, and so this will replace this old body here um, that I've kind of outgrown. And so yeah, there is my camera collection, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and enjoy Encounter. All right, thank you so much to uh, Lydia and the host wife for that video. So next up, we have a video from Nick about what he's doing at home. So go ahead and check this out. Hi, University people. It's me, Nick, uh, coming to you live from Nick's quarantine bedroom. I hope you're all doing well. hope you're all staying strong and stuff, you know, keeping sane. Um, if you're interested how my quarantine is going, the first thing I'd like to tell you is that online classes are the worst thing ever. Like, uh, you might be familiar with the fact that I'm not a great student in the first place, but having to talk to a computer about classes is is just the worst. I cannot imagine people who do it regularly. Um, you know, I and I, I do miss at least being able to go to um, campus and see you all on Thursdays and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's just you know the worst things. Um, but you know, I'm trying to keep myself occupied at school, or at school, at home, um, doing stuff like on this this big old TV over here. I I hope my computer up to it, and I can watch sermons whenever I like. And that's uh, been uh, a lot of fun, actually, more fun than I thought it would be. And um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be more musically involved and stuff like that. But probably the most fun thing that I've been doing throughout this entire quarantine has to do with this thing right here. This is Ikieni Viafiki. This is uh, the New Testament in Greek. And so I got this from one of my buddies at church, and I was interested in, in learning. So I, I started um, finding some Greek lessons online and stuff like that, and that's been a lot of fun. I've been learning a lot. Something about learning a new language is very, uh, it's captivating and it's fun. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. I've been, I've been trying to keep more in prayer. That's something I, uh, I kind of struggle with because it's, even now, even after a year, it's been, it's kind of like new to me um, in a way. But uh, it's helps a lot, you know, and God reminds me to drink water and get some sunlight and stuff like that. It brings me great peace in, uh, in this terrible, terrible bedroom. So, um, that's really all that's been going on with me. I hope the, I hope the rest of you are all right. I hope you're doing well. Um, I hope the rest of you, uh, enjoy the rest of Encounter. No, seriously, enjoy it. No pressure. Enjoy the rest of Encounter. Bye guys. All right, guys, so we're keeping this party starting by having another Jackbox party this Friday. Be there, be square. Seven o'clock, get in the Discord, and let's have some Jackbox fun. 
All right, guys. So next Friday we have our talent show. So it's May eighth for those of you who are you know like dates a lot. So make sure to mark that down in your calendar. Uh, submit the videos to Jimmy, five minutes or less. You know, maybe your talent is sinking some some sweet shots like I'm about to do right now. So, Ooh. All right, well, Intervarsity, as you can see, my you know feet are on our boogie boards. That must mean that summer is quickly approaching. And so to get ready for that, we have Summer Varsity or Summer Intervarsity Small Groups, as some of you may know them. Uh, so they're going to be starting the week of May 18th. Make sure to uh, follow us on all the social media, and there'll be more details to come soon. So keep it on your calendars. All right, guys, well, we have another week of Ivy Live happening, the musical, if you will. So same deals before, there will be a link in our bio if you want to sign up, and then we're going to have a Zoom discussion right after. So it starts at 5 o'clock our time, and then you can Zoom on over to discuss uh, afterwards and then hop in to our Jackbox party tonight. So it's going to be a fun Friday, guys, and we hope to see you guys. Well, hello, Governor. For the After Varsity this week, we're going to be playing Spyfall, mate. Good day. Well guys, it is my great treat to announce that our speaker this week is none other than ICF's own Callie. So everyone go ahead and give a big round of applause in the chat and she's gonna just lead us through an amazing message. So check her out. Hello, my Ivy family. How are you doing? I miss all of you and really hope you guys are staying safe and healthy during this time. And I can't wait to be in person with you all very, very soon. Um, and my, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Callie Chesbury. I am also on staff here at Las Vegas uh, Valley and um, I'm overseeing our international student ministry at UNLV. So um, if you have not met me, I would love to meet you in person um, when school starts again. So um, a little bit about me, um, you can tell. I'm, I'm married and uh, I have a one-year-old child and her name is Evelyn and we just celebrated her birthday on Monday and I just can't believe um, she's already turning, she's already won, <gasps> crazy. Um, and she's a lot of fun. So um, again, I would love to have all of you play with her when um, this whole quarantine situation is over. Um, so yeah, and I thought it would be fun also for all of for me to share a little bit of what I've been doing during this quarantine time. Um, so I have been organizing my house, a um, couple of rooms, and just because I have the time. Not really, because we really needed to baby proof the house. Now Evelyn is at home all day long. Um, so we had to do that and uh, it was tiring, but I think the result, it turns out, it, you, know, you know, it's worth it. So uh, that's one. And I also have been uh, coloring again um, and color. I've always loved coloring and uh, connecting God in, through the color. Um, but it just, I felt like I've, I've been busy, like I've always felt busy and uh, didn't prioritize it enough. Um, so I was glad I got some chance um, to color again. Um, and I also been binge watching Korean dramas and uh, three of them, I can totally recommend it to you all. Um, they were all recommended to me by my ISIF students. So um, if you're curious or if you're interested, go ahead, watch them. They're on Netflix. Uh, first one is Crash Landing on You, and second one is Taiwan Class, and the third one is The Kingdoms. Um, they're all very different, but um, uniquely good, okay? So, um, and the last thing I've been doing is that I, I am growing my own yeast. Yes, yeast. Um, yeah, because every time when I go to the groceries and trying to find uh, those packets of yeast, they're always sold out. And I wanted to make some bread for my baby. Um, and um, yeah, so I was kind of desperate. And my, my friend inspired me to grow my own yeast. So we'll see how it goes in the next couple of days. They should be ready. Um, I really hope they 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 will be ready. Okay. Wish me luck. Um, yeah. So, so that's just a little bit about what I've been doing and uh, what have you all been doing? I don't know if we would have a chat function or in the gathering times, 
I would, you know, feel free to share with one another what you've been doing, the fun things during this quarantine time. And if you wanted to share them with me, feel free to follow me on Instagram and uh, um, and send me a message or add me. Um, I would love to know. So hopefully you guys are all having some um, good times, you know, during this very, very hard um, lockdown situation um, and spend some time reconnecting with God and uh, connecting with your community and do some self-care. And um, yeah, so just, uh, um, yeah, a little remind reminder over there. Okay, um, so I uh, would like to pray for us and uh, get us start get us started for the night. So if all of you would be willing to bow your heads and join me, God, I just thank you so much for who you are and for your sovereignty and for the fact that you're still sitting on the throne. And God, um, in our whatever situations that we're all going through now, God, you are still um, our Lord. And Jesus, I just pray that you meet every single one of us where we're at. And uh, um, may you continue to give us life and continue to give us joy and love in this, uh, in the midst of um, this pandemic. And God, we love you and give you the time. And uh, would, would you please speak through me? And, uh, um, and yeah, God, we love you and we praise you. I pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, great. So, um, I am really excited to take you through, um, first Samuel chapter one and two, the story of Hannah. And I love Hannah's story because I had such a, um, personal story connect, like really, really similar story connected to Hannah and, uh, um, and so when I get the chance to talk about her, I always say yes. And um, so, yeah, if you wanted to turn your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter 1, feel free to do so now. And uh, I, uh, I will lead you guys through um, these chapters. Um, so a little bit background about Hannah. So Hannah is... Uh, one of the two wives of uh, Ikahana, and uh, um, she also she so Ikahana's other wife. Her name is uh, Panana, and she has many children. But Hannah is the one that's barren. Um, and the scripture said the Lord has closed to her womb, and she had no children. Um, so Hannah, um, and if you wanted to follow along, I would like to read. Um, first Samuel chapter one, verse, um, six. So because the Lord has closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept, um, kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband, Ikahana, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you down, uh, downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? Um, so that's just a little bit of background of what kind of situation she is in. Um, I think um, you can tell that she has been praying about... Um, the fact that she's praying for a child for years. And uh, whenever she goes to the house of the Lord, um, she will be made fun of. And uh, um, on top of her already, um, you know, already sadness and that loneliness um, of being a barren woman, she was being laughed at and being provoked. Um, so you can imagine what kind of stress and painful state she is. She was, she's been through, right? And, uh, um, and her husband, even though he loves and adores her, um, and he would, uh, he didn't mind that she didn't have a child. And also he often would give double portion of the sacrifices, the meat from the sacrifice to her because he just loves her. But he didn't, he still, he didn't quite understand that the part of Hannah that felt missing because she had no child, right? Um, uh, and so, yeah, so, um, this is, um, I, I guess, the angle I wanted to lead us to look into her life 
um, today is to let. I wanted to take all of us through two of her prayers um, in these two chapters of First Samuel, and uh, um, inviting all of us to 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 see how was she praying and uh, what we can learn from her prayers. So, um, like I just read, um, they. The, the family have been a very faithful uh, worshipers of God. Um, and uh, this one time um, when they they went up to the Lord's house again and uh, after eating, um, Hannah stood up and feeling sad again. And she, um, and verse here, here, verse 10, in her deep anguish, Hannah uh, prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, God Almighty, if you were only looking on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. On his head. And this is the first prayer I wanted to take all of us uh, through. Um, so, um, you can tell just in the tone of her her prayer and then just the words that she had said, right? Hannah was in a lot of pain, a lot of shame, um, loneliness, helplessness, um, and desperation, right? Being barren for so many of these these so many years and uh, being looked down on and being mocked and being laughed at because she had no child. And that just pain, um, that, that kind of pain that she was carrying. And uh, um, in her prayer, I think it just said so much. Um, so I wanted to take us um, through about five points of what I learned from just that one verse of her prayer. And the first one I wanted to um, take, I wanted to, um, I learned, right? And I felt in her prayer was that uh, when she said, Lord Almighty, I just, I can just feel um, her trust in the Lord. And then just that um, her belief and confidence in God's power and uh, her willingness to trust in Him um, that just showed, right? And when she said, Lord Almighty. And then she was pouring her heart out to God because she believed in him and she trusted that he would do something about, you know, her barrenness or the situations that she is in. Um, and then that's the first thing that she trusted God with her, with her whole heart. Um, and the second thing I, um, I heard in her prayer was that her desperation and also her determination at the same time. She made a vow with God voluntarily, right? And she reminded God to remember her. And not just a, a simple, oh, um, re reminding God of who, you know, her existence and, hey, God, I'm still here. I'm still waiting. Um, the word remember um, actually meant to go into action on behalf of someone, right? So when she said, the Lord, remember me, she was asking God to do something on behalf of her, to look at her misery and the fact that she's been bearing and she has been mocked uh, by other people and she had been suffering and she was crying out to God, God, will you do something? Will you just do something for me uh, on behalf of me? And will you just, you know, hear me, hear my cries and remember me? So that's the second thing that I heard from her prayer is that she is asking God to do something on behalf of her, um, to take actions for her suffering. Um, and then the third thing that I also heard from her prayer was that she was very, very clear of what she is asking God to do. She said, I, will you hear my prayer and give me a son? A son, not just a child, but a son, right? And not just like do something for me, but like specifically about I want a son. Um, and that just shows me how much confidence she has in, in the Lord. And also that intimacy that she has with God 
to know that God is listening to her prayer and that God will do something on behalf of her. So I just I admire that, right? Um, and her her ability to be specific and that relationship she has with God and also um, her honesty of what she wants, right? I want a son. That's what she's asking. And then the fourth thing I, felt, I, I heard from her prayer was that she was voluntarily promising God that if God would give her a son, she would also just give that son back to God as a declaration of dedication right? And that she would just dedicate her son to God and to serve and to minister before God um, for the rest of his life, you know? And I think in that, in that prayer, it just shows that she was very, very determined. She wanted a son and not just for her own good. Of course, right? She want her miseries and her um, despair to be lifted and that people would no longer be able to laugh at her because she was barren, right? She, of course, she wanted that to be, um, to be lifted. But also, she want God's name to be glorified and she want her son to be a dedication um, to God to show that he would be a service to God for the rest of his life. Um, and I was, a lot of times I, I wonder, right? Like if I wanted something, would I be willing to give that thing right back to God if God gave that to me, right? So I admire uh, Hannah for her faithfulness and her willingness to trust that if God would bless her with the with a child, she's also willing to let that child go to serve God for a bigger purpose so that God will be glorified in that. And I truly admire that. And after, um, and I think, so that's all the four points I wanted to highlight through Hannah's prayer. But the, the fifth point I wanted to also tag along to point it out to all of us is that after she said all the prayer, right? Um, there is a small verse also said that, in verse 12, as she kept on praying to the Lord. Um, I think that just so significant, right? She did not just pray this one prayer one time alone. She's bring she, she has been praying years before to before this moment. She was also praying even after, you know, after this moment, right? She's She's continued to be praying and maybe the same prayer again and again and again and again, right? The, the, the scripture made a point to, to record the fact that she kept praying. So I think like that just gives me a lot of um, encouragement to know that um, we, a lot of times we pray. It's not just a one-time thing. Um, especially for those things that we wanted so badly and we desperately needed to happen in our lives, right? We want it, we desire it so much. We might need it to continue to be praying for it. Not just one day, not just two days, not just a week, a month, maybe sometimes years, right? And, uh, um, and I think, um, I think every time when I see that, when she said she kept on praying, um, I don't feel so bad that when, when I wanted a child, I had been praying for a child for so many years um, that I needed to continue be, to be praying for a child. And, uh, um, and I've gone, I've, I've gone through that. And, uh, that's the point. That's why Hannah, um, story was so personal to me. Um, is that I, and in times when I was praying, my husband and I, when we were praying for our child, uh, or to have a child, right? We were, um, we were often discouraged, um, because it's, it has been a year, two years or three years, right? And we, we just haven't, been able to have a child. And when I was reading Hannah, I was encouraged that she kept on praying. So I hope this point will also encourage us, right? Um, that we would keep, continue to be praying for whatever we needed to, to be praying for. Um, and, uh, so we, so with all of that being said, right? We have all been in a time of pain, loss of a, lo a loss of a loved ones, uh, financial crisis, 
moving and leaving a place of fam uh, of a familiarity, right? And uh, battling of anxiety or uncertainty. Um, I hope those, I, I just hope, right? Like I know all of us have gone through those times, but I, I hoped and uh, um, we all had chosen to spend that time with God during those times because Hannah did, right? And she just, she didn't just pray one time or twice. The whole time when she was barren, she spent it, she leaned into God and asking God day by day, again and again, continuously, year after year, she prayed. So I wish, um, I know we all have gone through dark times and uh, we're all going through one right now, right? Um, and I really hope Hannah's, this prayer particularly would encourage all of us in this time of pandemic. We would go to God and lean into him and uh, choose to, to stay in front of God, um, in front of God's feet and be praying. And not just one time, not just one day, but continuously, right? So um, as we are all battling against COVID right now, um, we're all choosing to stay focused on God. I hope, right? Uh, let's say that we are because we're all right now, we're watching the sermon. We are having our friends in ministry, uh, in like, you know, in church, and we're still constantly engaging with God's word. Um, I really, really just hope that we're all choosing to stay focused on God and this God Almighty, right? Um, and when I, when we look around our city, our city, our country, our world, uh, we're all suffering. Um, COVID-19 uh, um, has really hit us really, really hard and uh, pushed us into chaos, sickness, loss, pain, political battles, emotional, physical, and uh, mental exhaustion, and uh, this unknown, right? And uh, none of us enjoying being in this place, just like Hannah. She has been going through this time of barrenness and she's suffering, right? And uh, um, she um, and she is in this time of pain, just like we are. So I know that all of us are experiencing pain, loneliness, isolation, um, anxiety, hopelessness, and desperation. And uh, I feel like at times I was experiencing all of these emotions at once. And it gets really, really overwhelming. Um, so, t so like, in light of our prayer, like learning from Hannah's prayer tonight, right? I want to inv invite all of us, friends, right? Uh, our Ivy family. As we are living in this darkness, um, and uh, um, as I was preparing for this teaching, I just felt like God was inviting us to going into a time of prayer and uh, praying not just one day, not just two days, but weeks and weeks ahead or months or years. Um, and he wants to invite us to pray like Hannah. And um, let me just go over the, the five things, right? I just shared about Hannah's prayer and uh, um yeah, and I just felt like, so first, right, He, I felt like God is inviting us to pray just like Hannah, um, trusting that God is the God of Almighty, that He cares and He loves us and He is the most powerful, and that He conquers even death. Jesus conquered death. So we already know that He is powerful and He can overcome whatever this pan pandemic is, 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 is doing to our lives. So would we be willing to pray like Hannah, believing in God's, um, God's power and believing in that we are praying to a God of Almighty? And the second thing, um, I remember Hannah was praying with the, the praying honestly, right? So I, I, I wanted to invite all of us to pray with the authentic, uh, um, of, with, um, the authentic, uh, authentic of who we are and lay our emotions and desperations in front of God, asking God to remember us, not just to remind, to be reminded of our existence, but to going into actions on behalf of us for whatever we needed prayer for, right? And thirdly, um, 
Hannah was very, very specific of what she was asking for. So I wanted to invite all of us to be specific and asking God exactly what we were, what we were wishing Him to do. If it is stop COVID nineteen,、um, succeed, and or if it is you know praying for our、uh, praying for the fact that we can be successful in this time of online classes and doing well and doing good to, in our finals, or continue to have community during this time because we are so sick and tired of loneliness and isolation,、uh, or if it is finding a job after this, right? Whatever it is, I want us to going in prayer. Honestly, in front of God, to just claim what exactly what we wanted, and be honest and specific with God. And then the fourth thing that、uh, when she prayed, she dedicated her son. If God would give her the son, she would give him over to God、um, as a gesture of trusting,、um, trusting in God's. Uh, sovereignty and also the dedication that she was willing to give God,、um, so that to just so that God can be glorified in all of、um, who she is and、uh, all of who her son would be, right?、Uh, so I wanted to invite all of the, us. Would we be willing to dedicate whatever it is that we are asking God for、um, to give back to God、um, and entrust that、um, God entrust it with God? Um, for his kingdom use and for、uh, so that he can be glorified, right? And then the fifth thing:、um, would we be willing to keep keep praying, not just today, but in tomorrow, the next day, the, in the weeks to come? Whatever the prayers that we are、um, asking God for through Hannah's prayer,、um, would we be able and willing to continue be praying for it? And、uh, I think if we're not practicing, we're not into varsity, right? So、um, I wanted to just give us、um, a minute、um, for us to just sit in silence and to really asking God, God, what is the deepest desire I have right now?、Um, and uh,、um, in the next minute,、um, I wanted to just all of us in our own time.、Um, In our own space, in our homes,、uh, we would just pray Hannah's prayer,、um, but change, swap out、um, the portion when she was asking for a son with the things that you were asking for. So、um, let us just sit in the next,、uh, sit in silence in the next minute, and then、um, asking God what it is that we needed prayer for. And whenever you're ready,、um, here is how we wanted to pray. We'll use Hannah's prayer in First Samuel verse ten, and、um, this is my example, right? Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, me, Callie, and do not forget your servant, but give me a peace of mind to know that. Um, I can parent well in this time. Then I will give my parenting to you, God, for the day, for all the days of my life, to entrust、um, you with how I would parent and to dedicate uh, myself um, to the ways that you would teach me how to parent. So that's that's my prayer to God, and.、Uh, Whatever it is for you, I invite you to continue、um, to use this template of、uh, um, Hannah's prayer and continue to push through、um, to pray, right? And remember the five things we talked about:、uh, that claim God's power, God, is, God Almighty, and the、uh, second thing is that、um, ask God to remember you, but not just to be reminded. Of your ex- existence, but to re- to take actions on your behalf. And thirdly,、um, pray very specifically about what you are needing the prayer for. Right? Be honest with God. And then fourthly,、um, be willing to give God 
um, the exact thing that you are pray that you you prayed for to trust that He will bless it and use it to glorify, uh, use it to His kingdom, and that so that God will be glorified in that. And then for and fifth, fifth and lastly but not least, right, is that we will continue to be praying that same prayer in the days to come until God answers our prayer, right? So, um, so that is the first prayer that I wanted to lead all of you guys through. And I really hope you would hold on to that and continue to practice. Okay. So, um, now, um, stretch a little bit and let us, let's go into the second, um, prayer that Hannah did. Um, and, uh, before we go into that, um, and I just wanted to share a little bit, right, um, about, I love Hannah's story because it was so personal to me, but at the same time, I think her story demonstra demonstrated um, trust, hope, faithfulness, and uh, also victory, right? Um, and uh, um, the fact that she, uh, the two prayers that she did was very, very different. The one that we just talked about, it was a prayer of petition and hope. She was holding on to God and pleading that, God, you would give me a son. Um, but the second prayer that we, we are going to read through and look through is a prayer of victory. I think a lot of times when we are asking God for things, whatever it is, right? No matter how desperate we are, uh, we, there's, we can, we can feel like we're, there's a lack of, um, faith that to, it's, it almost feel like, we can pray, but we don't know if whether God would God would answer, right? And and I think in Hannah's story, I wanted to highlight the fact that when God when Hannah prayed the second time, uh, it was a prayer of victory because she at this at this point she God has already given her a son, and uh, not just victory because her prayer was answered, but a victory because she had experienced God's faithfulness and also for her to demonstrate that she is willing to be faithful to God as well uh, because this prayer was done after she had um, raised Samuel and wind her wind winded him and uh, ready to drop him off to Eli to be ministered in front of God right and that um, I think in the tradition traditional um um, Israel, Israelites or Jew, <laughs> Jewish tradition, um, they typically win their child when they turn three. So, um, at this point, Samuel is already three, right? Um, and, uh, um, the fact that after three years, um, Hannah still remembers her prayer, her vow to God, and she went to the Lord and to give up Samuel right? Give up in a sense, right? He, she had to leave him with God. Um, and, uh, but she did not do that with sadness, but she in, in, instead afterwards was praying to God and her prayer that I want us to look at the second prayer was full of rejoicing, full of hope and full of trusting in God and God's sovereignty and uh, also just victory, right? Um, so, I hope Hannah's second prayer would remind us that um, when we pray, let's pray as if we already have victory. And uh, in in certain sense, right, we already did. Jesus has already died for us and resurrected, so we have a we have a faith that is victory victorious, right? So let's pray like that. Um, and uh, um, I know. Uh, in times of darkness, we call on God, knowing that He His faithfulness and sovereignty. We cry out and we hope, but uh, um, there's time we are still we're not able. We don't know how to pray, and I recognize that in my own life too. Um, I don't know how to praise God. I don't know how to pray like I already have a victory. Um, so um, something that I have, I, I think God has been introducing to me was praying through scripture and it is um it, it's a spiritual discipline right like um it is so this practice of praying um scripture 
It's a way that God allows God、um, to shape to shape our prayer life through the words of Scripture. It's already written, and we don't have to come up with whatever that we needed to say. We can just pray through it,、um, and it opens our hearts to praying particular prayers, psalm teachings, and hopes found in the Bible. We might not. Um, necessarily would、uh, be able or willing to pray if it were, you know, for the sake of praying through the scripture. So,、um, Hannah's second prayer today.、Um, I wanted to just、um, let all of us practice、um, in terms of praying,、um, script, praying scripture.、Um, We don't, and because I recognize we just did a pretty intense prayer. I think, um, because I I felt like even for myself, it's it takes a lot for me to recognize what exactly I need and to come before God humbly and willingly to pray. So I recognize that. Um, so I don't wanted to necessarily bombard you with more、uh, information about Hannah's prayer or like the intensity of her prayer,、um, but I do want you to fully experience her prayer. Um, so um, we're not going to dissect her second prayer, but I do want to invite all of us to read through Hannah's prayer together in community, but not just to read through it in our regular ways.、Um, but I wanted to invite all of us. I、um, English is not my first language, and so、um, I would still consider my lang- my heart language like. The language to my heart、um, is Chinese. So,、um, and I don't know. I think、uh, some of you you might be speaking more than one languages.、Um, so, I want to invite all of you,、uh, whatever language you felt like it was your heart language. I want to ask all of you to pull up、um, on your computer or in the Bible、um, that trans that translation.、Um, Of Sam, First Samuel chapter two for Hannah's second prayer,、um, and in the next couple of minutes,、um, once you all are ready, I'm gonna give one or two minutes of pause, like probably ten seconds of pause, so you can get your computer ready. Um, um, I want to, instead of us talking about her prayer, I want us to going into her prayer, experiencing God through her prayer. Um, in our own heart language, as we read through this chapter all together, and、uh, um, so now go ahead, take a couple of seconds to get your computer ready,、uh, and I will get ready mine.、Um, so, like I said, I am Chinese, so my heart language is Chinese. So I will read through、um, this entirety of Hannah's second prayer in Chinese.、Um, so whenever you're ready, I. Actually, now I want all of you guys. Hopefully, you're already having the the translation pulled up in your heart language. In your heart language,、um, no matter if it's in English or Spanish or、um, or whatever other languages that、um, some of you might speak,、um, go ahead and have it ready and take a deep breath.、Um, let's experience Hannah's prayer together.、Um, as I start reading. Um, go ahead, start reading in your own、uh, language and uh,、um, translation. So, First、um, Samuel chapter two. Hannah 祷告说：“我的心因耶和华而欢喜，我的力量因耶和华而倍增，我的口向敌人夸耀，我因耶和华的拯救而快乐。耶和华圣洁无比。”独一无二，没有磐石像我们的上帝。不要再骄横傲慢，口出谎言，因为耶和华鉴察万事，他会按着人的行为审行，施行审判。勇士的弓被折断，软弱的变为刚强。素来丰衣足食的，为虎口而当故宫，本来食不果腹的，却不再挨饿。不育的妇人现在生了七个孩子，儿女成群的妇人却子女尽失。耶和华掌管生死，他使人进入坟墓，也使人起死回生。贫穷，呃，贫穷富足在于他，卑微高贵也在于他。
，他从灰尘中提拔穷苦的人，从粪土里呃晋升平凡的人，使他们与王子同坐，得享尊荣。大地的根基属于耶和华，他在上面建立了世界，他保护他的圣名，使恶人在黑暗中灭亡。因为得胜的不是靠人的呃勇力，跟耶和华耶和华对抗的人必被击溃，他必从天上用雷击打他，他必审判天下，赐力量给他所立的君王，使他所高立的人大有权柄。Wow, I think when we are praying through scripture, it is so powerful. And、uh, I don't know about you. When I was reading this whole chapter in my own heart language, I felt like I experienced so much of that power, and then that just that thankfulness that Hannah has toward God in her prayer. Right? I felt like、um, her. You know her. You know the feeling when she was praying in the first prayer. That despair and that desperation was entirely lifted, and she was lifting her her head really high because God has heard her prayer and because God has came through for her. And so I hope you, as you read through it, you were also able to experience that. And I again continue to invite you to read through. Scriptures, prayers, Hannah's prayer, or other people's prayer that resonate with you, like that, as if that is your prayer to God. And、um, uh, I think、um, in in Hannah's prayer, I felt that victory. I know that God has God's name has been glorified, and He is、um, glorified through Hannah's whole experience.、Um, So yeah, I I really I I think、um, taking you through both prayers in different ways, I felt like、um, I wanted to pray more. I needed to pray more, especially during this time, and not just during this time of pandemic. I think there were in life even after this, right? We we're still gonna encounter more many other hardships, hurdles. And、uh, difficult times and pains, right? But we needed to always be reminded, just like Hannah, when we are in trouble, we go to God. We do not run away. We go lean into God, trusting that He is there for us, and we pray earnestly, honestly, and、uh, continuously. We pray and asking God nonstop, knowing that He is hearing us and He will come through for us. And also, after God's answered our prayer, we always forget to thank Him, right? So we needed to remember that we go and praise Him for He has done wonders for us, and that He deserves our prayer, and He deserves our worship, and He deserves our praises, and we thank God for who He is in our lives. So I hope tonight.、Um, I'm so sorry for the lighting. I think the sun just came, just went down. <laughs> um, but uh, um, I hope that you were able to experience Hannah's prayer, and that you in your life, whatever you're going through now, and or collectively what we're going through right now with COVID nineteen, right?、Um, let's continue. Let's go, continue to go to God in community, in our own little homes, but still in prayer to ask God to come through for us. Ask God whatever that we need, whatever that we desire, and also be willing to give that to God for His glory.、Um, so I,、um, I'm really, really happy. I got the chance to pray with you all and、uh, and to spend some time talking through Hannah.、Um, and、uh, I really wish and hope that all of you have some takeaways from this. Um, and really, really praying that God will、um, continue to bless you and continue to take you through、um, this hard time of COVID nineteen, and that our community, our IV family, will continue to be to be tight and、uh, to be in prayer together. So、um, yeah, as that being said, let me just quickly pray for all of us before we finish our night of fellowship. Oh God Almighty. 
You are our God and our friend. We love and feel thankful for you. Thank you for showing us how to pray through Hannah's story and her prayers. And thank you for helping us to pray like her and hopefully be able to become as dedicated to you as she was and being able to entrust whatever that we're longing for to you and back to you um, so that you can be glorified, God. And God, will you help us in this time of COVID-19? And whatever um, hardships that we are going through, God, you know all of our stories. And God, you cared. Um, so God, I just pray that will you help us to focus on you and focus on each other and uh, continue to share love, share prayer in our community, for our community, for our city, for our country, and for our world. Because God, you desire us to pray. And you desire us to trust in you in our prayers. So God, we just thank you so much that God, you are um, in the midst of anything and everything. You are still sitting on the throne and you are in control. And God, we love you and we praise you. I pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. And be blessed, all of my friends, and I'll see you very soon. Good night. Well, thank you so much, Callie, and thank you so much, especially to any ICF. Uh, members that joined us for this amazing Thursday uh, encounter meeting. Uh, and I also just want to say a quick uh, birthday shout out to Lena. It's her birthday today, so I want to get some HBDs and chat. Uh, and we hope to see you guys hop over to After Varsity. So go ahead and join our Discord. Uh, for those of you who aren't in it, uh, we'll go ahead and pop down a link right now. And we hope to see you guys there to play some Spyfall. Have a great week, guys.